In this video, we're going to be going through how we coded in two and a half hours Sudoku Mastermind Pro and had it released to the App Store in this video and within 24 hours, it was already up on the App Store and fully monetized. So, as you can see, it has ads and as you can see, it's up on the App Store and it is ready to be downloaded and approved by Apple review team, fully monetized in two and a half hours and released the App Store within 24 hours. So let's get right into it. This is the CodeGrow platform and we're going to go for AI app tool and create AI project. Right, so here is our possible app ideas that we could have. Generates 10 at a time and you can go ahead and choose whichever you want. I'm going to go ahead and choose Sudoku Mastermind because that one looks the most uh, compelling to me. I think that one's going to be a good idea. So now we're going to get the AI app tool to generate the full app breakdown. So now that we have the full app breakdown, this includes everything. Project overview what pages you should have on your app, anything that it feels like you should include, functionality, even down to the ads placement. So it really includes everything and goes really in depth of what you should have in your app. And most importantly, the best feature in my opinion, the color palette. So this is the color palette that it believes this app should go with and that would make it a very popping app and something that will attract people and make sure that they keep using. So here's uh, we have the app store title and app store description and uh, stay tuned. I will show you later on how to get the app store subheading and your keywords from this app. So here's our full logo idea as well. So this is something that is recommended by the app. So let's go ahead and save the project and go into creation tracker and import our project. So here we go, Sudoku Mastermind. Let's go down to the bottom. So here's where everything you can be used. So once you release the app store, just go in here and fill in your details, including revenue tracker and everything like that. You can always come in here and look at your project overview, especially when you develop it. So let's go ahead and go to Canva templates and grab ourselves an app sketch template. So this is what we're going to use to sketch out the app uh, before we start development. So just creating the design. So as you can see, there's multi screens here, but we are only going to need two for this one since it's going to be the homepage and the Sudoku page. Let's just go ahead and delete everything over here. We can keep all of our app icons designs that we have created. So let's just go ahead and create an app icon. So back in CodeGrow, we can look at the logo idea given by the AI. So it suggests that we use a Sudoku grid with numbers arranged in a visually appealing way. The background could be the gradient from the palette it gave us and the app's name it recommends as well on the logo. So let's just go ahead and create the gradient. So first we are going to start with the teal. Apply that color and click gradient. From there we can go ahead and choose the highlight color which is the yellow. Apply that as the secondary color and delete the second. So now we have a gradient, let's just figure out which way we want it. So I actually preferred the first gradient, so let's just flip it around so it's the proper way. Now let's go find ourselves a Sudoku grid, the one that fits and looks good, and take it from there, put it all together, and have ourselves a nice looking logo. Now it's time to design the homepage. So let's start with the top bar. Here is where we're going to display the name of the app. So for this, we're also going to use the grey colour recommended in the palette. Let's just add a header to it. Change that to the AI recommended name. And now let's just add the text color the AI also recommended in the palette. Now we're ready, just getting ready to clean it up a little bit. We don't need any of these items. So let's just get rid of them and add our own buttons that we want. So from here, we're gonna to wanna to figure out how our app should look based off the AI's recommendations. So I'm gonna go ahead and design the homepage the way I believe it should look. So we're gonna try and get a button here and set it to the palette color. We're gonna have three of these, one for each level of the game. So we're gonna have easy, medium, and then hard. Now let's go ahead and design the second page, which will be the actual gameplay page. So we wanna have the similarity in the header. We want to add a back button so the user is able to navigate back to the home page. And now let's just go ahead and create the, what is going to be the main part, which is the Sudoku and then the number pad, which will be underneath so the user can input the numbers. So once that's done, this is what we're looking like. Let's just change our planner to our own app name. And now let's go ahead and create a few tasks that we want to do. So first of all, we want to create the home page. Next, we'll have create, easy mode, medium mode, and hard mode. Now then let's create the Sudoku functionality. Now 
and then create the icon sizes and then create app store screenshots and then we should be ready to release the app store now moving over to vs code we're using the full app template that we got from the code Grow platform so let's just go ahead and start creating all the files that we're going to need so we're going to need a file for each of the sections of so easy medium and hard and uh, we also have our homepage, which, which is main.dart. So we're going to head and start with the main.dart. We're going to copy it, bring it over to ChatGPT, use the commands and the command structure that we learn in CodeGrow to create the best command that we need to better get the result that we want. So there's a few important things we got to remember with this. We got to remember to use certain things from the AI, which is the color palette, because we want to be able to stick to these things. And we also want to specify everything very specifically just so we can get exactly what we want the first time and um, just so the uh, AI understands what we're actually after, what we're looking for and uh, what the outcome should be. Now, once the AI finishes generating what we need, we can go back to the IDE and start testing out the code. So I've pasted in the code that it was given to us with the commands that we gave it and this is what our first version is so it's exactly like the design we wanted not on the sudoku page but on the home page there's a few things that we need to tweak so let's just go back and edit the file a little bit so we want to have our easy page our medium page and our hard page um we they're all gonna be the same but we're just gonna have to configure them a little bit differently so let's just go through them uh finish all those pages and then import them into our main dot there so it's accessible from the home page so the buttons can navigate to it now let's start adding the functionality to our app. So first things first, we want the button to be clickable. So when the user clicks on a certain field and then clicks the certain button, that field gets populated with the number that they have selected. So now we have our code generated by the AI. Let's just go ahead and test it out. So now we have our easy mode here. So every time we open up the app, of course, let's just test it. Yep, we get a different combination each time. And so that functionality works. Let's just go ahead now and click on an item and once we click the button the number gets generated in there so if we do random and if it's wrong it'll be red if it's correct it will be the teal color that we need it to be the next problem i can see here is the grids the grids aren't properly visible so you can't really tell which the three by three is so let's just go ahead and um, identify which section of the code that is and add in a proper outline grid so we can have a black outline where each of the three by three is so the game can be played properly and as we can see that looks so much better it's so much more visible and the game is more enjoyable now the last design feature that we need to just change here is the buttons. The buttons need to be brought a little bit up. So we are able to put an ad underneath, like a banner ad, and that looks a lot better. It's higher up, it's better for usability, and it gives us more space for the ad. The last flaw is the background behind the buttons. So let's just make that transparent. So it is hidden and it blends in perfectly with the background. That's a lot better. Now let's go ahead and just transfer all these changes to medium and hard sections of the app. Now that everything's working well, let's redesign the homepage a little bit because it looks a little bit plain. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear out this first, make some space right above the buttons. What I'm thinking about doing is putting the logo there. That looks pretty good. It fills it out a little bit more, adds a little bit more branding. So let's just go ahead with that. I'm also going to go ahead and create the logo in full size so we can then download that too. And I have that ready for the app so we can generate the app icons and upload them to Xcode. And also we are going to need this to be able to display it on the app. So let's just add a new folder called Assets. Inside Assets, let's add the image. Now that we have our image, let's go ahead and add it to pubsec.yaml. So here we're going to have to declare the Assets folder and inside of it the image so we can call it from the main.dart. Let's grab our main.dart code and get the AI to generate the code that we need. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and paste it in and hit save. That looks a lot better, a lot cleaner. Everything looks good in the app, except we need a reset button. So let's do that now. So let's just go ahead and grab our easy.dart file and uh, tell ChatGPT exactly what we need. We need a reset button. So just go ahead with that and paste in the code that we just received. And now that's perfect. It resets every time we need. So let's just go ahead and add it to medium.dart and hard.dart. Now it's time for Google mobile ads. So first of all, this is the samples that come with CodeGo. So let's just grab the dependency and go to propsec.yaml and add in our Google AdMob dependency. Right, so once that is in, pub.get will go ahead and get that for us once we save the file. So let's just keep going back to the app, double checking that we haven't messed anything up. So second step is let's go ahead 
and grab our Kogoro overview and check what the recommended ad placement is. I'm going to go ahead and go with banner ads because that's what we planned for. So underneath the buttons here, that's where we're going to put the banner ads. First of all, we need to go and get our info.p list add addition. So let's open up the iOS folder, runner, info.p list, and then paste it in. Let's go over to Google AdMob and set up a new ad. So you're going to hit iOS. No, because it's not on the app store yet. Uh, we're going to have to go back after the release and get them to review that it is on the app store. So let's just grab our app store name and I hit add app. So once we're in app overview, we're going to click add add unit. We're going to click banner ad. Let's just enter banner Sudoku ad. Hit create ad unit. Now we're going to get our ID app ID and our ad unit ID. So let's just take the ad ID. This is what we're going to put into the info.p list. Let's just restart the app just to double check that everything's all good. So if we go to add sample.txt, we are able to get everything we need. So let's just go ahead and start with importing in our Google mobile ads first. So second, let's grab ourselves the banner ad. We're going to need our Boolean as well. Let's go ahead and grab everything we need for the init state. So our function is actually called. So let's grab our function and put it in there. And here is where you're going to need your add unit ID from AdMob. So this will be the second one. And finally, we need to grab our actual display for the ad. So let's go ahead and paste that in here. So now we can go ahead and test this out. So as we can see, it's above the Sudoku, which it's working, but it's not where we want it. So let's just go ahead and grab it and put it at the very bottom of the children function so it can be displayed underneath the buttons. That's perfect. That's exactly where we want it. Now we just need to go ahead and put this code inside medium.dart and hard.dart so everything is the same all the way through. All the pages have ads on them and everything is working as it should. Now inside the certificates, identifiers and profiles in developer.apple.com, we need to create a certificate for our app before we can continue. So let's just rename our bundle identifier to something that matches the app. So com.sudoku.mastermind. Let's paste it in there. So we need to register an app ID. So here you can enable all the capabilities of your app if you have any. If you don't, you don't need to do anything like we don't. So we're just gonna leave them empty and hit continue and then click register. Once that's done, we can grab our app name, go to App Store Connect, create the app, choose the app ID that we just created. Language, SKU, this is just for your own sake, so you can just name it whatever. So you can't reuse them, so just name it something unique for the app. Let's hit continue, and now we are getting ready to release the app to the App Store. Yep. So let's just go back and grab the App Store title from Cogro. Head over to App Information, and we'll pop it right in there. Click Save on that. Let's choose the category. So I'm going to go to entertainment and I'm going to go with games. Here we can now choose subcategories. So I end up going with board game and strategy for this one. Content rights, we do not steal anything. So we can just say no straight away. We can set up the age rating. This is very self-explanatory. Just go through and honestly answer all the questions uh, of your app. So most of the time it's going to be all no. Depends on what you're doing. Our age rating end up being four plus. So let's just click save and go through everything. We don't need anything else down here for our specific app. Let's just go back and grab our long detailed description and our promotional text from GoGo. So our promotional text is generated by the AI. This can all be found under creation tracker in GoGo. Let's just grab our long detailed description as well and our keywords, which are recommended and designed for this specific app by the AI. So just separate them by commas and copy them all in there. You don't have to put them all in. I like to put all 10 in. Click save. Now you're going to want to get a support URL, either your personal website or just use a Google site and uh, create a support URL there. Essentially just put your email in there and a few frequently asked questions for users. Marketing URL is optional and copyright can be either to you or your company or anything you like. So here's where the app store screenshots are going to be. So let's go ahead and make those as well. So let's just go into code grow, Canva templates. So before we do that, we just want to add the code to remove the debug from the simulator so we can take proper screenshots. Let's go ahead and take the screenshots that we need. Go and open up our template from code grow and edit out our app store screenshots. 
so everything's pretty much done for you here all you have to do is insert your screenshots and then add the headings and the subheadings we use ai to generate those as well but you have to add in those for yourself for your specific app but everything else from the design aspect is done for you So now let's just go ahead and get all of our headings and subheadings from ChatGPT that we have generated. All right, so now that everything is done, we can upload our screenshots in the proper dimensions to App Store Connect. All right, so once all that's done, we can go ahead and download our logo. So we can go to App Store Icon Generator in CodeGrow and download all of the right sizes. Now from here, we go back to Xcode, Assets, App Icons, get rid of all the pre-populated app icons. So here's all of our new ones that we just generated. We can go and manually delete them or just select all of them and delete them. These are all pre-populated by Flutter. So we can go ahead and just drag all of our new ones in. Most of them will populate. The ones that don't, we can just go ahead and do manually. So there's a few issues, we can go ahead and just fix them up. Once that's fixed, we can go into launch image and put in our launch images, which I'm just using the biggest app icon that we have. And now in the launch screen, we can see that it has already been populated. Here we can go ahead and change anything we want. If you want to customize it more, if you want to change the look of it, the background color, anything like that. As you can see, it just makes it the biggest size and centers it perfectly by default. Let's just go ahead and archive it. This will take a couple of minutes and once it's done archiving, you'll see a big bubble. Once it's gone through the validating stage, we can go ahead and click distribute app and test flight. And then this will upload it to App Store Connect for us to be able to connect our app application. So once it's done, this will take a couple of minutes before it's uh, available on App Store Connect. As you can see, there's nothing here yet in the build. So let's just go ahead and configure everything else. So in pricing and availability, let's just do pricing. We are going to do free, so we can just select zero and this will automatically do zero for every region. So we can just check and click confirm. Now let's set up app availability. So we're gonna do specific countries and we're gonna select every single one, except for mainland China, as there's a lot of issues with that and you need a lot of extra certificates that we don't wanna go through because it costs a lot of money. So I just tend to unselect it. We can click next and then we can click confirm. So here you can just check through everything and as you can see down the bottom, mainland China is unselected. So we can go back. And now on our homepage, we can see we can add a new build. So let's just select build one and set up the compliance. So we're not using any algorithms in this app since it's a simple app. So we can just click save. There's gonna be no issues and save again. So we gotta go through and set up the privacy policy and it's pretty simple since we do not collect any data. Once you're done, click publish and publish again. Last but not least, let's go through and add our screenshots for iPad. These are pretty similar. Just open up an iPad simulator and do the same. Just replace the screenshots and then you'll have your iPad screenshots as well. Now, once that's all done, we can click add for review. We can double check everything here. You can submit multiple apps at the same time, but we're only sub submitting this one for now. So let's just click submit to app review. And that's it. Within 24 hours, this should be up on the App Store. So it has now been 24 hours. And as you can see, here's our fully finished Sudoku Mastermind Pro. And the app is ready for distribution as it has been accepted by the Apple review team. And now on the App Store preview, we can see here that it is on the App Store and it has been released without any issues. No problems from App Store Connect. So if you want to learn how to make an app like this, just head over to CodeGrowAI.com, create a free account and start creating apps like this within two to four hours and have them released to the App Store within 24 hours.